where is marker? Where is marker? and gentlemen. I'm the fairy fool. And I'm the beetle bar. We hope that all of you comfortable are, for we will show you how brilliance alone can make wonders from but dirt and stone. But... That it takes skill to make that push. And what you also need is... Shush! <laughs> now, here's a small play whose characters bear some likeness to those with real-world cares. Can you guess the roles portrayed? Can you wrest the veil away? The Queen! I'm the victim but queen of the 
talent. I like music and I sing in a band. Now, my good people hear it. I just come up with a decree. I command that on yon open field, for me a castle swiftly be built. By 5 p.m. sharp, with many a room, else my millions are facing their doom. The architect. I am the ardent architect, shaper of dust, silicon, plastic, and fragments of rust. A castle raised, I can craft it with closed eyes. My teams, they dance, strum, and do realize. The page. I am the proper page, art in motion, dynamic, discreet, deep as the ocean. To go with the castle, the queen needs a map. To know where to go for a nap, and where to go for a crap. <laughs> About castles, not much do I know. I will do my best with the map, though. Now feast your eyes upon how it's done with but utmost skill in our Act One. <laughs> A castle raised, I can craft it with closed eyes. My teams, they dance, drum, and do realize. But seriously, just a few hours left. If I fail, my head, my body, bereft. About castles, not much do I know. I'll do my best with the map, though. But seriously, just a few hours left. If I fail, my head, my body, bereft. The architect ponders. Hmm. Two wings or three. More's always better, surely all can agree. His steam begins to whirl, the dust begins to swirl. Let's have some wings, fills the air. Oh, what industry! The page peers through the dust, but finds no comprehension. So he does what is natural, and without any pretension, he Googles the word wings finds them paired on most things, and draws them up to a two-winged mansion. By now, it's mid-morning, and time for a coffee break. The page grabs the architect. They chat in the coffee. So, the wing count is actually three. Isn't that obvious to see? The page just nods as his hands begin to shake. And so the day progresses. How fast the clocks fly. The page struggles mightily to learn how, what, and why. Changes land furiously. Strangers stand uh, furiously. Frustration it, uh, marks the page's step, once deft and spry. Now, castle seems raised, hard to see in the dusty haze. The map seems drawn, judging from the page's days. The clocks chime five, trumpets sound alive. <laughs> <laughs> the queen then arrives. But, gets quickly irate. Because nobody knows how to open the gate. <laughs> <laughs> and when her leg gets in the cesspit stock, as she looks for her throne, she goes, What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> now, I need to prep for the neighboring king, who to this castle will come visiting. But. The info on how the drawbridge to set is updated so the corking goes flat. So the queen puts her foot down and says, This may sound cool, guards off with their heads. <laughs> stop, stop. Your efforts were great, so this fate I find quite wasteful. So heed, O present, my wisdom. Now, I will not be true these more so faithful. Realize that in this endeavor, your life is eased when you work together. I command 
that on your open field, for me a castle swiftly be built. By 5 p.m. sharp, with many a room, else my minions, they are facing their doom. Now, let's try one more time this thing to do, but working together in our act two. Two. Castle raised, I can craft it with closed eyes. My teams, they dance, drum and do realize. Yet now it occurs to me that with the page, we should make sure to be on the same page. page. <laughs> About castles, I know not all that much, so with the builders, I will keep in touch. But, but seriously, seriously, just, just a, a few hours, hours left. left. If, if we, we fail, fail, our heads, our, our bodies, bodies bereft. bereft. Hmm, two wings or three. More's always better, surely all can agree. The steam begins to whirl. The dust begins to swirl. He jumps a quick note for the page to soon see. <laughs> the page retrieves the note, finds partial comprehension, so he runs what is natural, and without any pretension, he googles the word wings, finds some ties on some buildings, and draws a plan to a three-winged mansion. And so the day progresses. How fast the clocks fly? The page manages steadily to learn how, what, and why. Changes land furiously. Strangers stand furiously. Elation is the page's mood. His ink will never dry. Writing each note gives the architect pause. Caravaggio, Michelangelo, he ponders their laws. Ideas thus less wacky, designs thus less hacky, he avoids rework and dead ends those time sucking malls. Now, castle indeed raised, no more dust in the breezy air, the map is indeed drawn, detailed, resplendent, all aware. The clocks chant five. Trumpets sound alive. The queen then arrives, and flower petals are thrown. She takes the map and quickly finds her new throne. And as rough visitors roll through the gate, all goes smoothly. So she says, "This is great." Finally, she declares, happy with her new letter. This I deem just. Folks, let's hold a fair. Hi, I'm Marek, and I'm doing basically anything middleware. So, middleware docs, I'm your guy. Uh, hello, I'm Mirka. I write mostly for platform virtualization, and I'm also the resident crazy cat person. <laughs> uh, hi, I'm TNT. I write for OpenShift, and uh, I'm also responsible for the rest of this presentation. So, Here's what's going to happen next. We, this is a workshop in theory, so we're going to work. This means we are going to talk. This means you are going to talk. This means we're going to talk together. <laughs> what are we going to talk about? We have three things. We have, uh, first of all, we just presented a play. This is a, an extended metaphor. So what we're going to do is first unravel it. What does it mean? 
uh, what does it mean to you? What does it mean to us? I, I think we used language in the play that perhaps is a little bit difficult to understand, and perhaps the metaphors were not clear, so let's talk about that first. Then after that, we'll touch on what is no docs, no commit, slash merge, which is the title of this presentation. And <clears throat> after that, we'll discuss. If we have anything else to discuss, we'll discuss. In between, there will be a break, as uh, Irina said, at uh, 12, 10, 12, 12. 10, 12, 10. Right. So that would be a good time to escape and get some lunch. Uh -huh. And stay away if you don't want to. Come back, OK? <laughs> <laughs> no obligation. OK, so let's talk about the play. Uh, in the, uh, in the beginning of the play, I think on line 15, if you consult your the script, <laughs> then there's a question, right? The Beachley Bar poses a question. Can you, what did you say? Can you guess the rules for trade and can you rip the veil away? Right. Yeah. The rules for trade. So the three primary roles here were the, <coughs> the architect and the page. So these are obviously somehow related to no docs, no commit, right? So what do you think? Can anybody uh, volunteer a guess? I mean, like, what are those roles? What are the analogies in terms of real world roles? OK, we have a queen is the customer. Oh, OK. Yes. yes. This is good because it means that we're like really clear in our yeah. Uh, okay, yes, yeah, so French name. Oh, almost, almost. Okay, that's very close. Uh, what does the page produce in our play? The page produces. <laughs> a map. A map. Right? Oh, He's got to be a second to write. Oh, yeah! Just the power, the PowerPoint in the room is right here. Uh, okay, and then so what is the uh, what is the architect? So let's see. We have the queen, page architect, customer, technical writer, developer. Let's go back and forth so that you can kind of get that into your head, right? Go back, go forward, okay? <laughs> so these are the, the main metaphors for this. And uh, <clears throat> now we're going to go forward and think about the other metaphors, okay? We all, what else is, what else, what does the fairy food, uh, what did she do? What did she say? What did you say? <laughs> realize that in this endeavor, your life is easy when you work together. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so, working together is what she said. What did she do? Yes. The She's the manager. She, well, yeah, I guess in some sense, she is the manager. <laughs> she is my peer, and uh, <laughs> so, yeah. Um, she represents uh, the wisdom of working together, uh, because oftentimes, what, what does the Beatley Bar say initially? <laughs> Beatley Bar, what did you say initially? What was your premise? in terms of like... Right, so a small play whose characters bear some likeness to those of real right. world cast. Right, but before that, <laughs> before that, something about... Stigma. Right, of course. So, firstly, my premise was that it takes skill to make that push, both figurative and, and literal, uh, and that brilliance alone can create wonders. Right, so basically, we have an idea that, and this is kind of a myth that's supported in society, is that like you can be brilliant, you can have talent, and you can, uh, you know, the lone guy, hacker in the basement or in the garage or wherever, can create a, a new Bill Gates, dot, dot, dot. There's a lot of individualism, and this kind of thing is uh, a very strong, underlying message that the wisdom of the fairy foo, who is perhaps a manager or perhaps somebody who has experience in 
having people work together, which is, I guess, a manager, uh, corrects by giving the architect and the page a means of communication, right? So the communication and structuring the communication is important, and that's what the very few does. Okay, other metaphors. Let's see, other, uh, or let's just uh, turn the page and say, was there anything not clear in the, like, we, we try to use really fancy language. Is there anything that uh, you, you don't understand, you want clarified? What's a Yeah, exactly. It's like Yahoo, but, you know. <laughs> yeah, but cleaner, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, so okay. there's evil magic that we use to divine things. Right. There's a dragon back there. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was called the library before internet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Alta Vista, okay. Yeah. I was there. All right, so other questions? Like, uh, let's see. Anything in particular, anything? Okay, so what you're telling me is the play was completely clear, everything was perfect, and you just want me to continue. <coughs> Get on with it, right? Okay, fine. <laughs> All right. So we did really good job, right? Yeah, we did a good job. We did a good job. Okay. All right. Let's uh, now turn to because yeah, let's let's turn to the next slide, which is what is technical writing? Okay, because documentation is technical writing, and so here uh, we ask people in the audience, that's you, to tell us what is technical writing. And we're going to do this, um, we're going to get some answers. So we're not going to go forward. <laughs> so now's the time to raise your hand and say something. And next slide, please. This is in your experience. In IME is in my experience. And IMHO is in my humble opinion. OK, so then really, what, what do you think about technical writing? What do you think about? what technical writers do. Um, the template for this is that you say, hi, I'm brave. I'm going to say my role. I am a blah, blah, blah. And this is what I think, OK? So yeah, I know this guy's groaning because. Someone, I can't even remember that intro. <laughs> can't even remember. Uh, you want to start? You started. You raised uh, your hand. So. OK, so hi, my name is Anton, a uh, software engineer. I'm sort of in the middle of paying the customers and uh, <laughs> uh, in my humble opinion, taking to writing is an ongoing struggle to get some meaningful information from the engineers and put them in some understandable form for general audience. Okay. Thank you. Um, so I take it you you have an intermediary role and the key word that I heard from you was it's a struggle. Okay. Right? Is well, that, is that after correct? three years, yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, okay. That's in your experience. I hope so. Yeah, sure. Uh, to get information from the engineers into some form that. So it's easily understandable because, you know, reading GitHub source code is not so easily understandable. So. Yeah, yeah. I've tried that. <laughs> My hair used to be smooth. And <laughs> Source code. Okay, so that's one. Okay, let's get at least five. Okay, I'm not gonna go forward until we get at least five people. Okay, we have one. Hi, my name is Timur. I'm from G. And in my humble opinion, technical writing is a some kind of description of the problem that poses a country face with somebody who has a technical knowledge about the product or the rest of the world. Okay, so I heard. I heard I'm QE and technical writing is. That's the part that I didn't get. <laughs> Okay, so 
if I understand correctly, you say uh, it is writing that is done by someone who knows about the product. That's the, the main thing. So that should be familiar with the product. Uh, and it encompasses documentation, but not just documentation, other things.
So I, to summarize, you also work in content services. I do not. Um, so I'm just like hearing echoes of this. It's because of your beard, man. <laughs> <laughs> I only pretend to have a beard. <laughs> Someday. I can only hope. Someday. I'll exactly. be uh, okay, whatever you do. I'm not so rigorous, but whatever. Then you bring order to chaos, but with the, in, the specific intent to make it easy to find for the customer uh, what they're looking for. So there is an additional layer of intent. Is it, did I summarize? What am I missing? I agree. Yes. Okay. I, uh, as, an, as an upstream focused person, upstream. I, I would use the word user over customer. Okay. But user over customer. Right. Well, well, whoever would, uh, well, this is another controversial word, right? Consume the documentation. Um, this is, so, but, but basically you want to make it easy effective and quick for them to find it. Right? So it's finding it. Okay, great. So then we have a bunch of uh, opinions. Like, I know we did fine, and so the back row is like saying, okay, let's move on, but does n nobody wants to represent the back here? Tomas? <laughs> So, um, you didn't state your role, but I think it would be developer, would that be fair to say? Okay. This is just offline knowledge that I happen to know. And, but you raised a point, you didn't say what you think technical writing is, but you said you mentioned a problem of technical writing, or one thing that you see is that um, when writing about it, then if without the knowledge of the product, uh, actually using it, right? Hands-on experience. Experience gives you something concrete to to express. Like if I were to say, you know, what's a, uh, if I were to write a poem, you know, what's it like to be blind or something like that? Then I, I have no experience in there, so I couldn't really feel it. But if I write another poem, like what's it like to have nothing to say on stage, then <laughs> I've had a lot of experience. Right? Okay, great. So experience, uh, that is a, a, and it can be a problem because nothing beats experience, right? Okay, good. So, oh, are you raising your hand? No, you are not. <laughs> oh, another one. I think uh, your role is 
marketing involves, um, similar to what you were saying, is more than just documentation, and that it's specifically things that the customer looks, uh, is through use cases, includes uh, perhaps uh, dives or uh, reference architectures, it involves perhaps uh, things that are not strictly in the classical world of did I capture what you were trying to say? Okay. Great. So, we probably are out of time, right? Or? Yeah, we have like four or five more minutes before we break. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, what's the next slide? Okay, so next slide is we're going to go into the actual no doc, no commit philosophy. Okay. So, why don't we break early and so that you get 15 minutes of uh, time to decide to not come back if you don't want to. <laughs> but also to get more food, because I think there's a lot of free food here. Please go out and enjoy yourself. We will reconvene at 12. Before we do that, oh. uh, wait, we wait. have a bunch of uh, flash sticks here with uh, <laughs> the script and uh, the slides. So if you're interested, uh, you can find them all. And, uh, for those, uh, if there are more people than the than the plastics, just copy them in between. Yeah, so so this, this is a script. Uh, if you have hard copy and you um, want it soft copy, that's what we're going to stop with. And the slides like this. So, but in 15 minutes it'll be 12:20, right? Yes, please return to the room in time, 12:20. Okay, and use the break to get your coffee and also leave the feedback about the event, about the presentation. The links you will find on the back side of the, your program.
I felt the pain. Um, a rule of thumb is, it is at least for me, like, you know, you're familiar with these questions, like, how do you see yourself in five years? How do you see yourself reading your code in five years? Something like that. So that usually works for me, but only for me. That's the point. So, as long as you're going to
next side of the program. Thank you. Okay, so we have uh, more time to kill. Let's finish this. Uh, what is technical writing, which is not this thing. <laughs> Magically. Magically. Oh. Okay. Now we're going to go fast forward, right? <laughs> By the way, any, anything uh, about the play, uh, you can always talk to us afterwards. Okay. Uh, Okay, so the next step, before, slightly before we get to this, I want to open the same question, what is technical writing in my opinion or in my experience, to some of the folks on the stage, if you want to say something about that, um, or Robert, so, I, then, yeah, okay. please. <laughs> so I would say, I mean, I um, agree with everything that was said in this uh, room, and uh, I think that uh, about, um, about getting the information and understand the, the things, right? It's, it's really about the understanding as, as I had the feedback that uh, sometimes it looks like if we didn't, if we didn't try to, to understand it, uh, trust me, we are trying <laughs> all the time. But for an understanding, we, we need to have a developer on our side to uh, because sometimes we, we do have questions, right? And we are trying to understand that, so that's, that's the, the thing. Um, yeah. No. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> okay. Anyone else want to say something? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I kind of, I thought what a lot of people said about, um, you know, we should try to, talking about how we need to tell a customer <coughs> what they need to hear. Mm -hmm. Tell them the things they're interested in. And, uh, I think that's a really good point, and in a lot of ways, we're kind of like an intermediary between uh, the software and the people that develop it and the customers, and so yeah, we have to pay attention to what they want to hear and go and get that information and kind of act as a bridge. We are basically like, like the messengers, right? We need to collect information from global support, for example, customers if we have a chance to talk to them. Uh, from the developers, from um, yeah, from, from, from quality engineering, right? Because they also have another point of view on, on, on the product. So we have to somehow wrap this all up and then produce them up, right? Or the documentation. I, I once used a metaphor for us that got slightly controversial uh, that we are sort of like uh, Moses. <laughs> wow. Because he has to take the you know, infinitely complex word of, of the divine powers. Developers. Uh, <laughs> oh, I love that's over. How we need help. And he has to uh, condense it uh, and simplify it in, into something that is comprehensible yet uh, by, so, um, yeah, by, by, by normal people, not, not normalish people. As far as you know, sys admins are, are normal. <laughs> oh man, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't have asked all. <laughs> Right. All I can say is we're not professionals. That is, we're not professional actors. So everything expressed here is sincere. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, any, anything else? Uh, okay. Next. This leads. Ah. I will hold it. That's very kind. Um, so this leads us actually these kinds of things, like the, the friction or the difficulty uh, in avoiding to lose our heads, right? I mean, what is the act, end of act one? What happened? What was the consequence before the rewind? The minions lost their heads. The queen was irate. There was like a... The king was dead. The yeah. king was dead, yeah. But yeah. who cares about the king, right? <laughs> 
It's the queen that counts. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The king was dead. There was like a bad experience, and so. But the yeah. point is, uh, these things can were avoided in the second act due to a better communication model, basically. And so this is the focus of this talk, actually. What we're going to do now is pass on to step uh, or to do item number two is grok. Grok, who, who knows, who doesn't know what grok means? Okay. Uh, can you explain what grok means, please, please? Yes. Um. <laughs> oh, can you explain? Grok is a term borrowed from the Robert Heinlein novel, science fiction novel, and it means to understand. By grok, I understand. Well, it means understanding. It's a deep, yes. profound yes. sense. Understand everything. Right. 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 The essence. Okay. Stranger and Strange Land. Great book. Yes. Okay. Oh. What is the end? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, some, some people hate acronyms. Yeah, I had to squish it all on the slide and make it big and, you know, fulfill, you know. Actually, in a good documentation, we should explain the. Right, like, this is not good documentation. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. We shouldn't use slash. We shouldn't use slash. It's all caps. It's all caps. It's like. So this completely violated the style guide, but you know, <laughs> I had to do it. Right. However, this good point is that it's concise, right? And uh, I think by the end of this talk, then I hope that the people who are developers and who would like to uh, help their documentation effort realize that a small, concise note can be helpful to, as the seed, right? Uh, but we'll get to that in a few seconds. So we're, we're going to understand no docs, no commit, slash merge. But here we have no something, no something. Okay, this is a pattern. <clears throat> what does it mean? Have you ever heard of this uh, no food or drink, no party? No kielbasa, no party? I mean, that's got to be pretty uh, common here, right? Nobody has heard of that? I heard it only from you. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. This is like, or, uh, you know, many commercials have this uh, advertisements no, no campari, no party. Okay, maybe this is just in Italy. I don't know. Okay. No worth, yeah, exactly. This is the same idea. It's what is saying the idea expresses is that without this important thing, then you cannot have the next one, right? It's like a gating factor. It's like, uh, so let's see, next slide. What is party here? Uh, party is quality. It's like without that kind of food and drink, you can't have a quality experience, right? And so here, the documentation, including the user cases, including the, um, the readme files, including you know, just the man pages, all these things all are observed and read and contribute to the quality of the user experience. In this case, the user is the customer. And what we're trying to do is increase that overall experience, right? We're trying to get to quality. We're trying to make quality to be apparent. And because quality is not something that is, can be really inherent in something. Like if I say, is this, does this have quality? This pad of paper, or, uh, this pad of sticky notes, does it have quality? Uh, for some, some people might say yes, some people might say no. And, and the, the real answer is why would it have quality and who says, for me it has quality because it's green, I like this color, and uh, <clears throat> it, it calms me. So <laughs> to me this is, a, it has quality. But maybe, and that's just right now because I'm nervous I'm on stage. But maybe uh, another day I would be like, oh, I don't need this, it's just, it's dead trees, you know, what a waste of resources we, we could, I could, this has low quality. So quality is in the perception. 
And what we're talking about is the, the customer perception of not just the documentation, not just all the things that they read, but of the product, right? They, they use the product. I mean, <clears throat> really, we're talking about software. What is it physically, tangibly, that the customer sees or feels with software? There's a keyboard. There's a screen. There's, uh, you know, the, the software is all inside. Everything is in their experience it, and the documentation and how it interact with the software. It is all about the experience. So quality comes from the experience. Quality is a, the moment of experience, according to this really old guy who's probably dead by now, Robert M. Piercig. Anybody, anybody hear of this author? Robert M. Piercig, okay. He wrote a book called Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. Okay. It's about quality. It's an inquiry into the qualities. Okay, so quality is the goal here, but we can't build it into it. So, but how do we get to it? We have to act in a way that fosters it. Okay, so next slide. So we have some QA people here, QE in, in, uh, in some... some Okay, so what's the difference between QA and QE? Who knows? Okay, but the main thing is the Q, right? The Q is the quality. <laughs> right, it's like quality something, but there's quality involved, right? So what do... Comment? Quality engineering for quality assurance, right? Okay. Accurate. Even QE guys do. Raise your hands. <laughs> The difference is smaller. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. You should join the docs team, I think. <laughs> we make these fine distinctions. Okay. In this community, which is also concerned with quality, <laughs> then there is this philosophy. Okay. No test, no commit. What does this mean? Who can... QE guys. QA guys. What is no test, no commit? Tell me. Right. Okay. So basically, it's a gate on accepting of changes in the functionality. And that gate is in the form of a test, right? No test, no proof of non-regression or non-breakage or uh, proper <coughs> integration, then no commit, right? So basically, it's saying we, we can't really express quality. Ex the one way that we know how to express quality is to say we don't want to break things, okay? Or we, we want to make things... and we will not step forward until we have the assurance and the engineering of a test. A test gives us this kind of thing. So by doing this, we don't know if really we can add quality, but we know that we're maintaining it, right, by doing this process. Okay, so same idea. Let's go. What's the, what's the difference? One, it's more than one letter this time, right? It's one word. No docs, no commit. This is because now we're thinking, okay, before I commit, before I make this change, I as a programmer or developer in the common parlance, I am thinking not only of the functionality, not only that I don't want to break things, but I'm thinking of the user or the customer or the client. It's like I'm changing, for example, I changed the output format on the, the bin list command, right? Uh, I remember long time ago, bin lists used to have a fixed width format. That is, when you say uh, list ls minus l, you get a fixed number of columns for each, uh, uh, each field, for example. And this was really problematic for, for uh, usernames because my username was, uh, or login name, I guess, ttn, it's short, so there's like lots of space that's wasted, right? If you look at uh, bin list output, you see but these days, if you do a bin list uh, minus L, then 
if uh, all the columns are of one width, then they're compressed, right? So this is a change in the output format of the, the ls command. So whoever did that, <clears throat> it was a GNU hacker, because this is GNU ut uh, core utils. Um, at that point, they documented it, okay? So they were doing this. They were saying, okay, I'm gonna make a change in the output format. This is something that will affect the user. I'm going to document it because I want the documentation, how the, the user perceives my program, which is, you know, to be in sync, to be synchronized without the reality, how it actually behaves, right? So in this way, I maintain the quality of the program. Um, so that's the idea of having a synchronized thing. And the communication style helps a lot with that. Okay, so this is, when it's one guy, it's very easy because it just takes a, the, the right mentality to think, okay, well, I, I have some pride in, my, in the output. I have the pride in the user experience. I want them to be synchronized. It's all one guy. But when there's more than one person, when there's a docs team, and there's like the developing team, and there's the QE team, then how can they maintain quality if they don't communicate, right? That's basically what we're saying here. So next slide, please. So that's the gist of the, this, this presentation is like, how applicable is this philosophy though, right? And why is there no docs, no commit slash merge? I mean, what's, what's up? It's like, uh, besides violating style guides, why is there, uh, why is there this? Um, if I take, like when you're uh, committing to, you're changing the software, and every single change, if you submit a, a small blurb to the docs team and say, okay, you know, I changed this, I changed that, then maybe that's too granular. In fact, I would say most people kind of think that's, that's the first reaction we get. It's like, okay, you want, you want me to inform you, I'm the programmer or developer, you want me to inform you of everything that I do? And it's like, well, I just you know, changed a little a typo here or I just uh, changed the white space or added comments. Like, I don't need to inform you of that. And I agree, I think that's too granular, right? Uh, because that's not something that would affect the user. The user or the client or the customer doesn't see these things. So if I take a strict uh, stance like, okay, well, I'm gonna um, improve my organization and we're gonna make all the programmers, every commit they're gonna do something with docs related, that's too granular, okay. Next step, next slide. And if you do no docs, no merge, which means, okay, on every merge, so I do a bunch of commits, uh, you know, do my rebasing, blah, 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 and now it's time to merge the feature into the main line. If I do that, then maybe it's too coarse, right? There's a lot of documentation that could be affected by that one. So obviously, if one is too granular and the other is too coarse, you have to do the next one, right? You have to do, you have to choose. And you have to choose at runtime. Next slide. Which would be commit or merge. It depends, right? That's why it depends. You have to think about what is the impact, the client impact, the customer impact, the end user impact. So at this point, people are gonna escape. <laughs> Bye. Please send feedback. Um, so it is, I think it is not the intent uh, of this talk to say no docs, no commit. It's not the intent of this presentation to say no docs, no merge. But it is to encourage the thinking of when, when I do a change, does it affect the, the user, the end user, the client, the customer, 
or even <laughs> myself, because oftentimes I'm going to be writing software for myself that I'm going to be using in six months, and I add a cool new option, and I start to use it immediately, but I forget about that option. And then in six months, I'm like cursing up a storm because I think I hit the same use case. I want to add that option again. I have to go and look at the source. Wow, I could have saved myself you know, three hours of digging around if I had just written a little bit of documentation in a readme file you know, that explains this new option. But the point here is that commits too, core, uh, too granular, merging perhaps too coarse, it should be together. And when you have a team, separate teams, then this togetherness has to be, uh, should be, uh, this is what we hold here, it should be part of the system of the organization. That is, there should be uh, some kind of, let's work together to add this feature. <clears throat> let's work together, inform, so there's the planning, at the planning stage, then things to get started. <clears throat> Excuse me one second. Can someone else talk for a bit? Uh, <laughs> about what? what do, you want to talk about? <clears throat> do you have any experience in no drugs, no commits? Yeah. I have two comments slash questions. <laughs> Shut up. The first is probably the most uh, the to the last thing we're talking about. So, is the revision control made to auto document the changes so that eventually a documentation team can look into the, the commit, the log, and I mean, try to understand what changed without the developer needing to poke the documentation team? Well, the, well it would be, I think, in the ideal world, but in our world, several products and there are many like you know documentation backups what needs to be documented for example uh, there's to be honest there's no time to search revision history for every every product or every for example in red there's it's RAL is basically a bunch of packages all together right so uh, looking into the revision history it's it's takes that that much amount of time to to, to dig into it developer and also sometimes we are not able to tell okay is this change that significant that we should include it this is also for example for probably the release notes right because sometimes you just don't know which which uh, change is that uh, huge or not or which is just you know if, if how the customers use it because the, the knowledge of the product is so complex so we not we, we can't every time to do that but um, yeah basically you're right it would be great <laughs>
comes to this is to is to know your developers, right? You need to know the guy, you know, this is the guy you go to if I have a problem, or you, you need to basically, I, I feel that, that uh, maybe sometimes at the, the, the product recommendation of the technical team could be, could be uh, somehow not that integrated with the, with the development team, with the QE guys and, and, and all the others. And I think that the good, good thing to do is to integrate all those people together because overall we are working for the same thing, right? We want to be this product usable and you know, people should know where to go for an app and where to go for a crap, right? So, so that's, that's, that's the thing. expand on that question and also the answer. I think uh, ideally then we would have standards and we would also help uh, developers to approach those standards. I don't think we can expect everybody to maintain the standards. That's why we're the professionals and other people do things that they're good at. Um, but we can say, for example, if we expect things in outline format, we can say, you know, how to structure the information so that it's the initial handoff uh, is more efficient and, and just less of a um, having to dig out the information from one side and to the other. Both having it's like an agreed specification for how to communicate, right? It's like. And by, so. to, uh, by, docs, by the docs no comment, we didn't mean, we didn't mean to say that all oh, developers you just need to you know write it all. <laughs> It's not like that. It's just more uh, to, to have the initial information we can start with, right? Also, we do test stuff, so then we maybe uh, think about something else, which, what can be added to the documentation. Uh, we are also uh, working with GSS guys, so we are asking them, okay, so what's the biggest, what is the biggest pain for, for 
this product with our, the customers calling for. Okay, so so we have. It's happening here. Uh, I'm like, I'm from the next team as well. Uh, and <laughs> it's sometimes about asking the right question to the developers. Because uh, sometimes they are thinking about the number of patch. Well, a developer told me, well, I'm not sure what's inside the patch if it's just upstream. And I said, I don't want to know what's inside the patch. I don't want to patch it to it. No, in the code, what it does. I want to know uh, whether the customer uh, could be affected and what problem it, it fixes. You know, the, the, the uh, context for the customer. Why is this, this fix is important for a customer? And I need to ask the developer because he, you know, he, he thinks in, in code. I need to, you know, <laughs> to make him uh, think from the other side. Well, so that I'd be affected by that because the, some customers may not be affected because they don't use the feature or in that environment. Uh, so we uh, it must help us, uh, I mean, developers uh, with or by asking the right I have a like, similar experience. My, I'm a DevOps engineer, so I have uh, more problems. My, uh, I have more problems with specifications from, from either my front end and so on. Because sometimes, a lot of times, they are really vague, so you don't know the specifics. And then it's like, yeah, it's not good to give the developer a room to uh, uh, assume things. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, I think that we can wrap this. Uh, Discussion, it's not ended, but I want to say, like, yeah, the communication is the key. Yes. Yes. Sticky notes, guys. Sticky notes. Right. <laughs> Timely communication, okay? Yeah. Because if the if, if 5 p.m. arrives and the queen has an unsatisfactory experience, you know, <laughs> heads and body be wrapped. Okay, so next slide. Okay, we only have two minutes, so. The things that we can think about uh, and